What's going down, everybody? It's your boy, that guy, my high, tuning back in for another episode of the Cushion Coffee Morning Show. Gang, 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 gang. Turn up, you know what I'm saying? Or, or turn down. Or, or just drink some coffee and wake the fuck up. <laughs> Anyways, man, how you doing, Eric? I'm good this morning, man. I'm feeling real good. How me you too. I, me too, man. Besides how windy it was. Oh, bro, this shit woke me up last night, bro. Yeah, it was windy as shit all night. Yeah, chairs moving in the back in the backyard, Bruh. shit all over the place. I bet, I yeah. bet. Yeah, my my patio furniture was all over the place. So yeah. I was like, man, it's windy. And then I live on the third floor, <laughs> so like I have I, I hear all the stupid little vents and yeah. all the little things yeah. on top of the apartment all complex. Tink, tink, yeah, 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 all that little, <laughs> little things spinning for no goddamn reason yeah, and shit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. Let's let's get into it, bro. It's uh, it, Thursday. This is episode nine. Hey. Gang, I see you got a joint over there today. Yeah, you know, no no dabs today. What are you, what are you smoking on today? Um, this is the be good. The be and good. it's a Mac. Mac. Oh, yes, I like that. The miracle Mac. alien cookie. Yes, sir. It's fire. Shout out to yeah. Elvis and the dispensaries. Gang. Yeah, we got it. We got it, bro. We need to really sit down and plan our shit so we can get a couple people together and. Oh, yeah. Just sit here and pass some shit. Like, here, you try this. Try this one. Like, try like that this one. one. I'm going to try that. like this one. Yeah, because that, that shit would be fun. And just sit there and just really see and, and judge. you just on some real unbiased shit, like what people really think. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Of all the different, you know, talked about companies that we all kind of have in our, our little circles mm-hmm. that we, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. move amongst. But uh, anyways, let's jump into this, bro. You've heard of uh, y- YFN Loonchi? Uh, yeah, him and I share the same last name. F and Lucci. There yeah. we go. <laughs> I added an N into his Lucci. Yeah, no, no, no. Lucci. But uh, did you hear about what happened? I did. Damn, bro. Unfortunately. Yeah. I don't know how his connection to the whole situation is. They're not necessarily saying that he did it, uh-huh. but they're he definitely was, saying that he's a part of it. He's involved. And what if y'all are wondering, what, what, what did he do? What is he a part of? Somebody got killed, shot in the head, thrown out of a car. Mm. Bruh. Okay, see, I didn't know the details. Yeah, there was actually a 911 call. So some uh, 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 lady happened to be in the area, saw it. You know what I'm saying? She saw the uh, a white SUV swerving. Damn. And all of a sudden, a dude hanging out, pushed out, car kept driving. She went over to see what's up. Dude was sitting there trying to fight for his life, and she actually witnessed this man take his last breath. Damn, bro. Crazy. I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like, it, yeah, yeah, that's heavy. That that's super heavy. Like that's not even like, like how do you like you know what I'm saying? Like that's a crazy situation to find yourself involved in, especially when you know like he's been on TV. Right. He's he's a well known rapper. You right. know, I'm not sure of his financial situation and why he was necessarily in these situations or why you know what transpired into this. But you know, you can only say like, damn. If I had that type of money and shit, I would hope that I would be smarter, to, uh, you know, smart enough to be around people that weren't doing dumb shit. Yeah, or tell you, be like, you shouldn't be doing that. Shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's that's my whole thing with that. When I saw that, it was just like, just another one of those moments where I just shook my head like, bro, like, another damn. one bites the dust. For whether real. it was him getting shot or him now going to jail mm-hmm. or whatever, like, that just seems to be the trend for rappers these days. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's it's It's... We it's crazy out here. This shit's crazy, bro. Bro, there's too much money to be doing too all this much, shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? I get you live that lifestyle or whatever, but come on, man. Yeah, come I just on. think that at a certain point, it's okay to be like, all right, I'm an adult. Yeah, for sure. That's just what I I, I feel like. It's okay to be like, all right, I don't do this gangster <laughs> shit no more. Yeah, it is okay. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna be all right. I have a family. <laughs> yes. I am, I'm a man, and it's okay. Like I don't, you know what I mean? Like you could, you could, do, you could move a different way. It's okay to change. Um, but yeah, you know, shout outs to 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 Lucci, man. I, I and, and I hope he you know, I hope he his involvement's not as you know mm-hmm. as he we wasn't think. The one that did. Yeah, you know, I hope <laughs> yeah. that it's not like that, man. And then uh, obviously shout out to whoever it was. I haven't in in the articles I saw it didn't release any sort of names or anything like that, mm-hmm. you know, identifying who it was that actually got killed. Um but shout out to him and his family too, RIP. Uh, send yeah, my condolences, peace, you know what I'm saying? Because yep. regardless of what the situation is, you know, the, the situation and how it was resolved was definitely not yeah. handled correctly. Yeah, period. life was taken and... Facts. Yeah. You can't, you can't excuse that. You no, can't excuse not at all. that. Not at all. Um, and, and to kind of, you know, just get done with all this, you know, real sad stuff and shit, because I, I don't like talking about this type of shit. But uh, the FBI, you know, they're still doing their investigations. Um, and they basically just started hitting receipts, bro. Okay. They hit the receipts, yes, dog. Sir. Let me see what you they, got. They over here pretty much looking at uh, for all the rioters and stuff that they wanted to like the key players that mm-hmm. they've kind of like seen on videos. 
uh, mainly people in like costumes and shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Super easy to identify. We want that one. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You stand out more than everybody else. But uh, they're, they're getting them. They're starting to pull out receipts, looking at hotel uh, you know, uh, reservations yes. and, you know, all that shit, fucking credit card purchases, all that, where were you, would you buy all exactly, that shit? Yeah. where were you Good. let's let us tie you to this, to this right. event um, cell phone and, towers, let me see your cell phone, yep. where, where, what location was exactly, you and so far they've uh, nabbed the horn guy, the horn guy the shield guy, oh, okay <laughs> the feet on desk guy mm-hmm. the two zip tie guys yep. and the Auschwitz sweater guy, and some lectern guy and a few others Good. that they didn't name, but th- these are, these are all the ones that like have been memes. Yep, and, and on the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they don't, we don't know their actual names yet, but they definitely got you know, like I don't know what you would call these. I guess to some people would be the superhero names. <laughs> <laughs> others, it's you know, the terrorist <laughs> names. <laughs> It's all, de- all depending on what side of the fence you're sitting on. You know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> Some it might be a superhero to you. Some you might be like, that's a goddamn terrorist. It, you know, it is what it is. That's you know, funny. that's your decision to make. I don't, you know, I, I'm just calling it what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Call a spade a spade, motherfucker. Yes, that's Little right. bitch. <laughs> Man. So they all got booked and processed and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, Charged so far. Yep. Yeah. And, and they're still looking for more people. Um, you know, it's not it's not over. Like they're still looking for hundreds <laughs> of more people. Like like yo, I think we talked about this. I, I don't know if it was on the show, but I know I for sure talked about it with my girl and I was like, yo, I think the dumbest part about this is, is I think that they all think because they did it as a massive group, they can't get caught. That they're yeah, that they're not gonna go <laughs> yeah. to jail for this. That this is not a felony because we all did it. Like yeah. if fuck? I go down, we're all going down, bruh. bruh yeah. yeah, if you go down, you <laughs> all going down. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, like That's let's just be real, happen. bro. Yeah. We have the capability for like facial re- recognition technology. Right, it's on your cell phone right now. Yes, like and let's you don't be think the real. White House has some cameras to have this shit? Dog, Are you kidding me? It, and you think you're going to break into the White Come House and, and get away with it? We already, there's already tech companies that work with law enforcement uh, agencies in various states mm-hmm. that use re- facial recognition technology. Yes, to get into already. stores. Like, I've seen ones to get yeah, into 7-Eleven. Whether it's to get into stores or to find criminals. Cops right. use it already yeah. to find people. Exactly. So you don't think that the feds ain't using this shit already? <laughs> come on. Like, come on, bro. Like, we're talking about the government that's over here talking, you know, that, that's hiding UFOs from us for, for fucking real. ever. And just finally now acknowledging the shit. You dig what I'm saying? Come on, man. You can't do the same you shit. You talk about the five, same government yeah. that motherfucker had whole programs around motherfucking psychic abilities and shit and being able to sit there and pinpoint, you know, shit via remote, like just sitting in a fucking office meditating and like, what's going on. Hello? <laughs> I see the shit. Like, you know what I mean? There's documentaries. Go watch yeah, the shit. All that. Just we can't saying. go to Antarctica for a reason. Dog. Like, what the fuck is going on? We're like hiding over there. <laughs> There's some secret <laughs> shit going on, bro. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, come on, be just be a little smarter. You know what I'm saying? They definitely are, are they're definitely, yeah. Definitely doing using this technology to to, you know, find people. I, I would almost 100 percent guarantee it. And on top of the other shit they already know how to use, like, and have access to. Oh man, shit! People Think before you <laughs> before you act, mm-hmm. please. <laughs> so something cool about our uh, industry this year uh-huh. or last year, we uh, surpassed the two billion dollar mark for the industry. Like That's Colorado dope. alone. Oh no! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two billion dollars, <laughs> dog. I believe it. What? That's a lot of fucking money, bro. That's a crazy amount of money. That's like a stupid amount of money. Yeah, like, it, 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 and the thing that's so crazy about it is, like, we already knew that it was going to grow. Uh-huh. But to sit there and think that it grew almost, what, like, double, and at least in just our market, like, in a year, pretty much, right. like, that's crazy. Like, that's dope. And it just kind of proves the fact that it's here to stay. Exactly. You know, yeah, everybody's... It's not going nowhere. And it's just going to get bigger and bigger. Only getting bigger. <laughs> um, what, what was, what's your favorite way to consume, man? Like, are you... A, Flour, concentrate, edibles, like what are your your top go-tos? So nothing beats flour to me at the end of the day. Facts. Nothing. You're not lying. Yeah, that's that's exactly Facts. It's it's my favorite thing. I love flour. I love the smell. The whole process of just rolling up a joint, breaking yep. it down, yep. smelling it, the smoking it, the motion of smoking, lighting mm-hmm. it up, everything about it. 
exactly. like in the lighter. And, just, and keep doing it over and over. I love doing that type of shit. Yep. So flour and smoking is my favorite way to consume. And f- over the past about year, I've really gotten into um, concentrates. And I love them. They're convenient. They take you to the moon right away. But sometimes it be like, okay, damn, now I'm on the moon. You went a little Saturn too. And Mars, yeah, but I say you, you went a little fa- past the moon sometimes. <clears throat> and I'll just be stuck sitting there not knowing what to do. Yeah. But I like I like the convenience of it, of concentrates. Thanks. I really do. And I like the flavor of it, too. The terpenes and concentrates mm-hmm. are also really strong, which uh, I could appreciate, man. And yeah. edibles, they just, if I want to get fucking trashed. <laughs> You want to go to sleep? <laughs> yeah, take it exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm on the same wavelength. I think I feel the same way. Only minus the being back into the concentrates. Um, I went through my phase a couple years, um, like way back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I told you why. You know, I was able to get it for free, right? Because I had, you know, the industry plugs. Because I was, you know, managers and stuff, and people always bringing samples, trying to get onto your shelves, and you know, so I ended up with a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really convenient. But at the end of the day, I always found myself gravitating back to my blunts and stuff. For same reasons. The whole process, the whole interaction and experience of rolling up. And, ha- you know what I'm saying? That was the what really attracted me. So I was like, yeah, this is the way to go. Yeah, yeah. And then the concentrates, it, it was fun. And I li- it was exactly what you said. It was just really convenient for situations. Right. And for me, in my life, at mm-hmm. least. Because um, I could never, I never saw myself being able to be that person with the high tolerance for concentrates because I never wanted to afford the bill. There you go. You exactly. know what I'm saying? I yeah. knew that off the bat because I worked in the management. I saw the prices. I understood that game, mm-hmm. you know? So it was like, I don't have, I have flour money. Expensive habits. Yeah, yes. I have flour money. Yeah. I don't have concentrate money. $75 you know a gram? Duh. What? Are you, hmm? I, I, you know Excuse me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Blunts I can smoke with motherfucking. Yeah. What? No. So, yeah, and, then that, and that's what it was for me because concentrate, like when I took a dab, I would immediately want to smoke a blunt anyway Always because I right needed after. to complete this this whole process of smoking. And like, it like levels you out too. The flower levels you yep. out for sure. And then edibles, I, I never really was a huge, huge edible person. Um, I've actually more recently got into edibles because of high grade mm-hmm. and the syrup because of the convenience and you always got a drink on you. Yeah, yeah the flavor's yeah. fire. Like, fire, that shit's good. Um, you got to be careful, though. You can fuck yourself <laughs> up. Be you careful, yes. You might fall asleep. You did. <laughs> 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 but you're going to wake up. Yeah, but uh, the reason I asked that is because last year, we know that cannabis as a whole mm-hmm. just performed fucking immaculately. Right. You know what I'm saying? People stuck in the house. People needed to, you know, relieve some stress, zone out, go somewhere else. And... One of the ways that they did it, or actually one of the, the top ways that they did it, was edibles. Okay. Edibles saw a huge just surge in sales through this whole COVID time. So I'm sure a lot of new people were. Yeah, I think, I think honestly it was just because people had the time to sit at home. Oh, I think right. most and, people and are scared. Yeah, 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 I think yeah, most yeah. people were just scared of the edibles before uh, on a, you know, a larger scale just because it, there's so many unknown factors. Right. Right, like. There's the horror stories of man, I got so fucking high. Like, what you know what I'm saying? Oh my god, I'm so I out of control. The, I call uh, yeah, facts. <laughs> yeah, that you know what I mean. And then you have the ones that are like the other side of that spectrum, but still a horror story. Where it's like, man, you just waste your money. You just you just eat a bunch of edibles and you just waste your money. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that yeah. guy. So, you know, people are really like weary. Like, you know what? I'm just gonna stick to what I know. Like dabs work, flower works. Right. All the time. All the time. You know, so I think that's why there was always, you know, an abundance of people who bought that. And there was just a real select, you know, group that really enjoyed their edibles. Um, But the edible market just flew. That's dope. And I think it's because of that. Because people had the time to actually sit down at home and try and learn for themselves if it actually is going to work. So, yeah, that's crazy. Like, it it literally did great. Like, it outperformed the actual projected growth. Um, for 2020, like by a lot. That's dope. Do you remember your first edible? Yeah, I, I was high as shit, bro. But it was back in the day. Like my first edible, you gotta remember. Like I was in the game when there was very little regulations. Yeah, like very little. Like the variances were fucking bananas. Mm-hmm. Like people were definitely more inclined to you know say it was 100 milligrams or say it was this, but it'd be stronger than it'd be you know weak right you know especially back then like people would rather you get more fucked (laughs) up and be like holy shit (laughs) than to not get fucked up at all you know so they would definitely overcompensate just to make sure you know um so yeah my first experience was fucking nuts 
Like I, I just remember being so high and being like uncomfortable. Like it was that was that was the reality. Like what I was, was it? very. Uh, it was a brownie. A brownie. Yeah, you know. And and the one thing that people don't realize with the brownies, like like at home, for instance, when you make them at home, there's usually a hundred percent going to be this variance with from one half of the pan to the other. And a lot of it just has to do with just the simple motions of you walking from the counter to the oven. Like that well, movement yeah. will make uh, yeah. the oils move slightly different. And you know what I'm saying? Like your batters, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it's it's starting to separate immediately after you've mixed it and put it in your pan. Like it's the oils are starting to separate. So you'll see some of that shit on the top of it kind of yeah. moving from one side to the other or on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so one half is going to be stronger than the other half. And you just never know. You don't know you what know? side you're going to get. Yeah. It's a gamble. So yeah, that, my, that, that shit fucked me up. And it definitely did discourage me from going and messing with edibles for a long time. Right. Because I didn't like the, I didn't like how I felt. It did the same shit to me. It was a Reese's peanut butter cup. It was a small one. Okay. And it said extremely potent on it. <laughs> well, so at least they warned your ass. They did. So I ate <laughs> half of it and I, I was high, but I was, a, I'm hard headed. I want to get more high. I ate the rest of it, bro. Un and just done. paranoid. Done. Thought someone was following me. Oof. Told the homie. I was like, no, you got to take me to the crib. I believe it. <laughs> yeah. And then I didn't mess with edibles for years after that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. Um, and yeah, I, I, I didn't get back into edibles really until uh, I really got into like management and they started being given to me. Mm -hmm. And at that point, by the time I got into management um, in the retail side of things, regulations were definitely like, in place right there was laws there's rules yep. there was variances that you couldn't you know no more exceed. strong shit like they were yeah, yeah like yeah. you know here in colorado you got like a 15 percent variance of what the edible package says okay so if it's 100 milligrams you can't exceed like 115 mm percent -hmm. you can't go mm -hmm. lower than 85 percent you know okay. what i'm saying so like that or 85 milligrams like that that uh um uh, little variance is really tight you know what i'm saying so you know it like it makes a difference too. Hell a huge yeah difference. yeah huge because difference. you know you know you actually can dose more confidently mm -hmm. when it's the variances you know are so close that what you say or the package says you're taking per piece or per ounce or whatever is real right like that's really what it is absolutely um because yeah before that's definitely not what's free happening. go hell yeah dog. <laughs> you don't I know feel, what you use like i remember i felt like buying a 100 milligram edible back in like 2010, 11, like you was probably getting a 200, 250 milligram Easy. E edible. Easy. Like, just like I said, I think people, there was definitely a lot of overcompensation. Like, I'd rather you get fucked up and rave about my product to how, how fucked up it got you than you not get fucked up at all. And then you tell people how trash it was and you wasted your money. Exactly. You know, I think that was definitely the mindset back in the day. So, but yeah, anyways, move, moving on from edibles, I just wanted to acknowledge how the edible uses has went up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, yeah, man. So, but more legalization's happening. We know this. There's a whole bunch of states that are joining the the movement. You know, we're over, I want to say what, we're at 35 or 36 complete states that have a medical okay. situation. Yeah, rec is um, different, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're at, we're in the 30s. It's around like 35 or 36 that are right now have a medical situation. Okay. There's more that are talking mm -hmm. and trying to push that narrative. Um, so we could be well in the 40s. Here by the end of the year. Hell yeah. Um, and then we're around like 15 states that have a full recreational situation. Who's the newest one? Do you know? Uh, is it Jersey? I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Nope. But theirs is still all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so, but. Uh, we'll revisit that story once they go. Yeah. Like, once they figure that yeah, shit out. It's shit supposed to be out. after the 25th okay. or on the 25th. So we'll see what, what happens with that. Word. But another one that's looking to uh, legalize and making it a priority, like. New York is trying to, mm -hmm. um, is New Mexico. Okay. New Mexico is stepping nice. up and, and, and trying to get their ball rolling and they're trying to figure things out. They actually, uh, announced yesterday that they are going to go ahead and make it a priority and they're going to start putting things together to get that agenda, to, you know, get that agenda done. Dope. You know so what I mean? New Mexico. Yeah. That's so right. not a whole lot to, to talk about there cause they're just getting started, but it's cool. You know, I want people to acknowledge that That's right. it's happening. It's happening. Um, uh, and another one, that got happened or got filed this morning today mm -hmm. actually was Virginia. The Virginia governor no filed shit. legal legalization bill actually okay. this morning. That's big for Virginia. Big. Man. Really big. Shout out to Virginia Aggressive. for that, man. There we because go. Because y'all like that the East Coast right now, I feel like look, the West Coast has already had their shine mm -hmm. as far as what they're gonna bring to the table. Right. Now we need 
the impact of what the East Coast is going to do. Yes. And I think with the, I think the biggest thing that the East Coast is going to help solidify in the industry is advertising, marketing, and, and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they do. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think the need for that is still very apparent in the industry. Like, there's still a lot of companies that just don't know how to market and right. brand efficiently. Right. Um, and I think that's going to start to change over the next few years as more East Coast states start to join on board, you know, because let's, let's be real. Like New York is an advertising powerhouse. You know what I'm saying? Like, and anything over there on the East coast near that is, you know, subdivisions Mm -hmm. essentially of, of that whole situation. Like they all kind of just really have a good hold on, you know, marketing and branding and, you know, even as the South, you know what I'm saying? As, as Atlanta and Georgia, uh, Atlanta, Georgia all gets all into it. Yeah. yeah, Louisiana and, you know, Mississippi's already involved and stuff. But as all these bigger states are influence or states, I should say, the states that influence the rest of the world um, or the United States, especially mm-hmm. and the cultures that we all kind of like thrive in. Um, they, that's going to change. This is going to help. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? And I think that's really one thing we're going to see change over the next four or five years is how we as cannabis influencers and businesses and everything are going to be able to market Mm -hmm. and advertise and brand and shit. You know what I'm saying? And yes, legalization is going to help completely like on a federal level absolutely, uh, because it makes these things more possible. But I think the East coast situation, like they're going to, they're going to show it's going to be different, bro. Show us some shit. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Real shit. It's going to be fun. It's going to be super dope. I think it's going to be dope as well. Oh yeah. So, but yeah, man, moving on, let's go back to Texas. What's going down in Texas? God damn it. Yes, sir. I like Texas. I do like I, Texas. I was, in, I was in Dallas earlier this year, or, or uh, late last year, I okay. should say. Uh, it was what? Over Halloween. I was there. I was in Dallas over Halloween. Um, but we were talking about them the other day about their medical and how trash it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it is. It's horrible. It's terrible. You know, and for those who don't know, Texas has one of the biggest, you know, populations per state, you know, in the United States. Like, it's nuts how many people are there. It's like 30 million goddamn people in Texas. It's insane. It's <laughs> and its they, own country. Yeah. And they have less than, it was less than 3,900. It was less than 3,900 people who actually have medical cards. Out of 30 million, they had like 3,811 or some shit. You know, like to just put an exact number on it, it was like 3,811 Think about that. Out of 30 million. Think about that. That was bro. one person per every 10,000 people. That's fucking stupid. Stupid. So, yes, I think, you know, everyone is starting to talk about this. They're hitting headlines. People are realizing how dumb that sounds mm-hmm. and how much money that they're leaving on the table mm-hmm. by not doing this. Like, fuck all those tickets and all the bullshit. You're going to make twice, three times, quadruple what you're making off of tickets off of the taxes. Yes. Like, what are you doing? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? You don't see, you don't so, see what's going on here. What yeah. everybody else is doing. <laughs> right. So, but they've actually said uh, there's some there's some big players in the state of Texas that have kind of agreed, like, all right, you know, we need to, you know, expand on the medical. We're not going to just close it out. Right. We're going to leave it on the table. We could talk about options. So they're willing to talk about the idea of expanding the medical uh, industry there so the conversation is going yeah be the, yeah okay the one thing that's going to take longer though is recreational use <laughs> they're <laughs> oh, still God. like we ain't re- we ain't gonna be a recreational state <laughs> you know Ever. what i'm saying <laughs> like it's pretty much like no 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 we, we'll we're, we'll talk about expanding this medical shit but if you think it's gonna be a free-for-all up in here texas nah so do you think they'll be the last ones to do it? Probably at this point, I really they might really be. They might be like all the homies that from Texas that be like, "Yo, bro, Texas be the last one." Like, you, that's all you, I hear too. And you might be right. I know so many people from Texas that yeah. are out here, bro. And Look, they all say the same shit. It'll yeah. never happen. Look, and, and the thing that's so crazy is I use like I'm usually the one that's like, "Nah, you don't know." Like, just wait and see. Mm-hmm. You never know. Like, mm-hmm. you don't know who's gonna be last. Mm-hmm. But I really think that we might have found the one. Like at least for like a at going. least for recreational use, right? Like that's the that's the thing. Like because they already have a medical, right. so they're already in the game. Exactly. But when you're talking recreational use, they may be one of the last that actually implements any sort of recreational situation. Yeah. You know, so. I heard that maybe Austin would be the first city to even 
Oh yeah, Austin and there's the one that uh, Gage the from Crystal Leaves, the store manager that yeah. we interviewed the other day. I forgot I the forgot name of it. From. Yeah, but there's another state that he said is just as progressive and and you know a lot like mm-hmm, Austin. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that very well could be the the other one right there. You know what I'm saying? Boots on the ground in Texas. Boots. Come on, boots on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I think I'm about to uh, go ahead and end it here, man. I hope everybody had a good day or good morning and you have a good day great day send good vibes into the month world because when you do that you're gonna get them back in return i promise i promise energy good energy attracts good energy bad energy attracts bad energy that's just what it is that's how i live my life god damn it <laughs> shout out to the the sponsors everybody's uh link or uh, instagram handle will be in the descriptions per use we got crystal leaves we got high grade we have habana extracts we have cuban crew and of course we have the content creation studio shout out to you eric Thanks, and man. and Appreciate the studio you, for helping me uh you know bring this this to life absolutely you know what i'm saying and and bring this every shit five days a week too and we've been working and doing other things God so just it. be be ready for all the content all the interviews that are coming we got another one with cam um that drops on saturday if you haven't seen some of the uh clips there's a couple clips up already but it drops on saturday um, he's a former athlete that basically got into the cannabis industry, has a very in- uh, inter- interesting story, um, and now he's a pheno finder, or the pheno finder, you know what I'm saying? Shout he's a strain motherfucking reviewer, and he gives you them <laughs> top dog motherfucking reviews, because that's what he does, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man, I love you guys, there is no me without you, and uh, yeah, pat yourself on the back, you know what I'm saying? Give yourself a hug, and get yourself a motherfucking robe if you ain't got a robe yet, and shout out to anybody who who can get the robe connect. I need a robe plug. We need a robe plug, all right? So if you got a robe plug, hit me up in the DMs. I told you I need a varsity jacket style robe. You know what I'm saying? With the with the patch, you know what I'm saying? Cushion coffee right here, the big how high TV on the back. Varsity style. You dig what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Name right here. That guy mile high. Feel me. Gang. <laughs> but I love you guys. Shout out to you. Peace. <laughs>